Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking nature scene made with Prome AI and After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So Prome AI, this is the website, this is what it looks like and basically it is an AI software generation tool. Now the cool thing with Prome AI is that there are many tools all bundled into one. There are things like sketch rendering, image generation, HD upscaler, text to video, image to video, etc. So you really don't have to pay for all your AI subscriptions when you can have it all here in one place. So now let me show you exactly how this works. The first thing that we are going to have a look at is text to video generation. So you can see the community's uploads here and honestly, like they look pretty cool. Like for example, if I'm looking at this one here, like that is actually pretty usable. So this is a nice, you know, time lapse of the night sky with this cabin and that's the prompt that they used. And if you like to use this, you can always remix it or download it and do whatever you want with it. Another cool feature in Prome AI is Relight and I found this one to be quite useful where you can adjust the overall lighting atmosphere of your image and you can make your image shine again if you want it to. So for example, I've used the AI generation to generate this image and sure, I was going for a dark and moody look and I think it's done a really great job. But if I run this through Relight, you can see what happens over here. So if I show you this one as an example, you can see that there is just way more light coming in through that window and everything seems a lot more illuminated. So there are many different options in here that you can choose from. So for example, I was choosing uh, this one over here because I want the light source to be on the right hand side. You can also change the stylization which will allow you to enrich the colors of your images. And down here is how many images you want to actually generate and then once you're done you can actually click generate. So I found Relight to be a really cool tool to just add some more dynamic mix of the lighting into your actual images. Another cool tool that we have here is sketch rendering and this is basically where you can upload a sketch and then if you want to add a prompt and then you know it can generate some stuff for you. So let me show you an example over here. So I was working on a video last week and I needed a logo so this is the logo that I created. So I've uploaded it here. I didn't use any prompt. The model that I chose was the latest model V3 and the style that I chose was some kind of 3D style. Now if you notice how many styles that they have up there, there are just so many. There's like photography, anime, conceptual art, illustration, etc. So there's a lot to explore. Once I added all of that in, I just moved the creativity uh, slider a bit to the right and I just added some key lighting in there. And basically some of the stuff that I was able to generate are things like this. Now again, I went from a sketch and that sketch was just on pencil and paper and if you really want to just mock up some quick you know um, images from your sketches then this tool is super useful so again these things are actually usable if you just want to display your logo in a different fashion then you can use this tool which is pretty cool so moving on another cool feature is the text effects and you can see the community here has uploaded a lot of their different styles and if you like any again you can just remix them but I was playing around with this as well and what I was doing is I was able to put my logo back in and technically it's not text but you can see the style that it generates and it's actually really really cool so here I went for like a you know industrial urban destruction kind of feel but here you know it looks very nice gold brassy kind of effect and it's got some nice lighting on there so again very usable so moving on to the final thing I want to show you and that's the AI image generation. So this is what I'm actually here for. And again, you can see the community and all of their images and if you want to remix any, you can. But what I did is, this is the image that I'm going to be working on today in After Effects and I was able to put my prompt in. And once I put my prompt in, I was able to enhance my prompt with AI. So, you know, you can only write a few words and then you can click this button and then it will enhance the prompt. 
The options that I chose, I chose V2. I didn't choose any style, but the scene, I wanted some kind of country, uh, landscape-y kind of scene. And so I just put that in. I didn't even put any lighting. Uh, the ratio, I was uh, I wanted a widescreen, so I had a 16 by nine. And then I was able to click generate. And so on pretty much on the first try, these were my first three images that uh, were generated. And this is the one that I'm going to use. So personally, I think Prome AI for image generation is just fantastic. It, it enables me to you know generate exactly what I want. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that into After Effects I'm going to show you how to animate it. So here we are in After Effects and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new composition. I'm going to leave it at a 4K composition, 3840 by 2160, 30 FPS at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once you have that, then you need to import the file that you've just downloaded from Prome AI. Cool, so now that you've imported your file, just drag it to the timeline and we're just going to rearrange the scale because I did download it at super high quality. So now I've just uh, changed the scale to that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layer pre-compose and we're going to call that image and we're going to move all attributes in there. Cool. So now that we have that, I'm just going to create another new solid and this time I'm going to call it wave. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the effect called fractal noise. I'm going to put it on here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the transform settings and if I go into scale and take off uniform form scaling I'm going to change these two values I'm going to change the width I'll leave it at 100 and the height to about 10 then we actually need to animate this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold option hit that stopwatch for evolution and write time times 300 so if you want it to move faster or slower then you can just change that value there so now that we have that i'm just going to take the eye off that and bring that at the bottom and i'm going to create a new adjustment layer and i'm going to put this above everything and in here i'm going to search for displacement map i'm going to change the map layer to my wave i'm going to change the source to effects and masks i'm going to change the horizontal display to luminance and the vertical display to luminance and then i'm going to change the max values to 40 over here and also 10 over there now you can see what is actually happening to that clip so I know that it's working there, but it does create a little bit of clipping on the side. So to fix that, what we need to do is we need to put some motion tile in there and I'm just gonna bring that to the top. And then I'm just going to increase these two values to let's say 300. And once you set them to 300, now there shouldn't be any black bits. So the last thing that we need to do on here is we need to draw a mask over the water. So all we need to do is just make sure that you are on that adjustment layer, hit the pen tool and then draw out the water. Cool, so now once you've done that, then all we have to do is press F for feather and we just have to increase the feather. Now, the only thing that I would change in here is that when you scrub through, you can see that there are a few rocks in the water that are affected by that displacement map. So what I'm gonna do is on that adjustment layer, just grab the pen tool and then just draw over those areas as well. And then once you've done that, just press F for feather and we can just change feather for that to about 15 or so and then if you don't want the rocks to actually move just change it from add to subtract and now those rocks don't move so that looks pretty cool so that's step one complete the next thing that we need to do is we need to make the sky move so what we're going to do for that is we're going to go into the pre-comp over here and on the image we are going to search for the effect called cc slant so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to move the floor to probably about there and we'll play around with this a little bit later so now once we move the floor the next thing that we need to do is we need to animate the slant so i'm going to make sure that i'm on the first keyframe hit that stopwatch just press u to bring up my keyframes move to the the end of my composition and I'm just going to move it to about 
let's say 30. I want it to be pretty slow moving. So now we've got our slant, but you can see that we have all these black things on our edges. So to fix that, it's gonna be the same trick that we used from before, motion tile. Let's just put it on top and let's just increase the output height and the output width and click mirror edges. And now we have a nice slant animating. So that looks pretty cool. So now what we need to do is we need to duplicate that image. So I just press command D to duplicate it, get rid of the effects that we have on that top layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the pen tool and I'm going to draw a mask over the stuff that I don't want to move. So I probably want to start it maybe around about here. And cool. And then once you have that, you can just test it out to see if it actually works. And it does work, but look what happens when I go over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to delete those points over there. And I'm just gonna make sure that that area is masked out as well. So that looks pretty cool. I'm just gonna open up the feather settings and I'm just gonna change that to about 50. And that's just gonna be a little bit softer. And there we have the sky moving as well. So if we go back to our main comp and if we have a look at it all together, so now we have the sky moving and we have the lake you know, trickling. The last thing that we need to do here is we just need to add another new adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, I'm just gonna add some curves. So I'm just gonna bring this down a bit, but I'm also gonna bring it up a bit there. So it's just a bit lighter in that area over there. And then the final thing that we can add in here is another new adjustment layer. I'm just gonna put this one right at the top and I'm just gonna add some noise. And if I add probably about eight or 10% of noise, now that will tie it all together. So that's about it. So that's how we use Prome AI to help us generate images that then we can go and take into After Effects and create stunning, nice, nature scenes just like this i hope you guys learned something thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video